We thank you for your health, for our health, and for our strength. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Father, we are humbled by your forgiveness. Now, Lord, we're praying now, thanking you, Lord, for the church, the church of Christ, that institution of salvation. Uh, Paul says that its salvation is in Christ Jesus, and we're thankful for his body, which is the church. Now, Father, we're praying on tonight on behalf of all the sick, the shut-in, and the afflicted, praying a very special prayer for Sister Faye, Sister Esther Guthrie, Father. We're praying for all of our sick that you will touch their bodies, that you will heal their bodies, preserve their lives, yes. allow their golden moments to roll on a little further in this life, and that their hearts and their minds will be prepared and ready for the life to come. Yes. Father, we're praying for our world and this nation that you will stamp out the violence that you will divinely intervene in the hearts of men who are evil, those who are contrite, that you will change their, uh, uh, their hearts, that their behavior may follow. Father, we're praying for wars and rumors of wars throughout this nation, and that you will bring an end to the conflict, Father, and bring healing to the nation. Now, Father, we're praying a very special prayer on tonight for... Um, this Bible study. Yes. We're praying that you will lead our hearts and our minds deep into your treasure. Yes. Father, we're praying that something we say tonight will exalt your holy and magnificent name, will cause the lost to be saved, the saved uh, edified, mm -hmm. Satan terrified, and the man of God encouraged. Mm -hmm. This is our sincere prayer. We ask in your holy son, Jesus' name, let us all say amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, we are in still in lesson number eight. Uh, we are in lesson number eight of this great uh, study on tonight, uh, God's peace through spiritual discipline. God's peace through spiritual discipline. And uh, we're grateful for your presence on tonight. Uh, we left off uh, dealing with question number seven. Uh, Brother Marcus will put that on the uh, screen for us. Question number seven. Uh, we left off dealing with question number uh, seven. Uh, the Hebrew writer says that discipline produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those uh, who have been trained by it. Uh, that is where we uh, left off on last week. Uh, we will pick up there. I want to just do a, a quick little short recap just of the end of where I left off, and then we'll move forward from there. Um, we, we talked about the fact that when you are mature in Christ, you realize that every situation, no matter how dark, no matter how rough, no matter how long it may be, you come to understand with spiritual maturity that God is allowing you. He may not have sent every situation, but if it occurs, God allows it to occur because he is preparing us for this present life and for the life to come. And we started talking about Hebrews chapter 12. Those who are taking notes, uh, we started talking about Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, verses 5 through 11. Now we got through verse 6. Uh, let me just recap a little bit and we'll pick up with verse number 7. Uh, but we talked about uh, the fact in, in, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5, and I'm, I'm quoting from the New Living Translation, uh, where uh, the Hebrew writer says, and have you forgotten the encouraging words that God spake to you as his children? He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. And we press the thought upon your hearts that God's discipline is for correction. He is not uh, an angered God. He is not a um, uh, uh, disenfranchised God from our heart and our feelings and our needs and our desires. Uh, God does not get pleasure out of punishing you. Uh, this is not child, spiritual child abuse. God's discipline 
gives us correction, all right? And then we went further to talk about the fact in verse number six, he says, for the Lord disciplined those, here it is, he loves and he punishes, underline that term punishes, he punishes each one he accepts as his child. And we dealt with that word punish because in the King James version, he uses the term scourgeth. God scourgeth. Uh, and the word scourgeth there, we told you the, the strong reference number for those who want to go back and do your homework is 3146. 3146. And the word there is mastigo. Mastigo. And it's spelled M A S T I G O O. Mastigo. M A S. <laughs> T-I-G-O-O. -O. And mastigo literally means to flog, or it gives a picture of a victim being strapped to a pole or a frame and literally, <clears throat> excuse me, literally being whipped with a whip. Now, some may say this is crucial, this is harsh, but what you must understand, this is yielding to us as believers the picture of God sending severe pain. Watch this now. Yes, he's sending severe pain, but it's in the best interest of the believer. But watch this. Not just an interest, Sister McCollum. It is in the best eternal interest of the believer. It is in the best eternal interest of the believer. Uh, and, and so remember, God chastens for correction, all right? He does not ch chasten to actual punish. Now, I know that's the term, the word that the New Living Translation uses, and even scourge it in the King James is a crucial word, but we, we must remember that God is chastening. He is correcting us, all right? God is expressing, here it is, his purifying love. When God chastens us, when he corrects us, when he allows us to go through some discipline, he is purifying us with his purifying love, which is always, again, working for our eternal gain. It's all about our eternal gain as we live by faith. And I gave you Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 25, and also verse 38 to read on your own, but I read into your hearing verse number 18, uh, which Paul says, yet what we suffer now. Now here's a sobering thought, and this is enough to make you shout. He mm -hmm. says, yet we suffer now. What we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us <laughs> later. So I'm here to tell you tonight, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I want to tell you tonight, it does not matter what you're going through. It does not matter how dark the day may, night may seem. It, it doesn't matter how long the day may seem. It doesn't matter how tall the mountain of your despair might be. I need you to understand that whatever you're going through today has no comparison to what God has already prepared and has in store for you. What you must do is humble yourself like a child before under God's mighty hand and hold on by faith, trusting God is going to bring you through. There's nowhere in the record where God has ever brought a faithful servant to any form of adversity and left them at the point of adversity. I double dog dare you to find it. If God called you, if God anointed you and sanctified you for a purpose, and I'm talking about historical record in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Bible, mm -hmm. God never left you at a point of failure. If he calls you and anoints you and prepare you and appoint you and send you, he's going to see you through. I wish I had some help here tonight. Sister, Sister uh, McCollum, I'm not trying to preach, but I, I feel some preaching coming on. <laughs> Uh, listen, you, you need to understand he will not, Sister Sacha, he won't fail you. God won't fail you. So, so Brother Miles, why then is he giving us this purifying love? Well, I told you this last week, and then we'll pick up where I left off. Our ultimate goal, Brother Marcus, 
our ultimate goals, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, sensational saints, listen, our ultimate goal is, in, is to get to heaven. And that's where every saved soul shall dwell. Every saved soul is going to dwell in heaven. But the reason God has to purify us, because I told you, according to Revelations 21 and 27, that nothing sinful can dwell in heaven. Matter of fact, nothing sinful can even get to heaven. Are you hearing me? The Bible said, again, Revelations 21, 27, New Living Translation, nothing unclean will ever enter into it. Now, what is the it? I told you, go back up to verse one and two, you'll see he's talking about heaven, the holy city. He says, nor anyone who does what is this detestable or false, but only those written in the Lamb's book of life. So God has to purify us. He has to um, uh, take us through the spiritual purifying that takes out all of the uh, sub uh, materials and minerals that, that's unclean and allow the pure gold, the pure uh, uh, mineral to, to shine forth. That's what he does when he allows us to go through that purifying process. Now, come with me back to Hebrews chapter 12, and we're going to pick up back at verse number seven. Any questions before I move on? Any questions or comments? Because I don't know if I gave you time to do that last week or not. Any questions or comments? Sister Connie, it's good to see you tonight. All right. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7. As you endure this divine discipline, you see that? Divine discipline means designed by God. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Now, that's a blessing in there. That's a blessing in there. Because God never mistreats his children. God's children has the best inheritance plan. God's children have the best medical plan. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> God's children have the best soul insurance. He says, whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? Look at verse eight. If God doesn't discipline you, as he does all his children, it means that you are illegitimate. Underline that word illegitimate or write it in your notes. It means you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. Again, if God doesn't discipline you, it means you're not his children. All right? Uh, you're not his children and it means that you're illegitimate. Now, I want to deal with this term illegitimate because there's some falsehood, some false doctrine being taught about this, and it's been taught all in the streets uh, everywhere. King James used the term bastard, bastard, B-A-S-T-A-R-D, bastard. And the word bastard there, uh, Sister Kim, comes from a Greek word, nathos, uh, I'm sorry, nothos, nothos. N-O-T-H-O-S, again, N-O-T-H-O-S. And the word nothos there means not in lawful wedlock. Not in lawful wedlock. I'm, I'm breaking this down tonight, uh, Brother Joe, because we need to understand this has nothing to do with being a sin-filled child or uh, uh, or a child of disgust. Let me say that again. You know, people say, oh, that's a bastard child. They, it, it's as if they're inflicting the, the fact that uh, this child is a sin-filled child, uh, a child of disgust. Well, how many of you know a child has nothing to do with the way he comes into this world? That baby has absolutely nothing to do with it. Okay, the baby is simply born outside of wedlock. It does not suggest the baby itself is sin. 
but he may be like David. He may have been born in sin. All right. Maybe may have been born in sin, but 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 he 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 is not sin. Now, what the ancient text does suggest, walk with me here, walk with me. The ancient text does suggest that without the care, the love, the oversight and discipline of the father, the child could become unruly. The child could become a person who practice sin. It, the child can become a disturbance. He can become an unruly individual. Now come back to the spiritual side. That's just like you and I. Think about it. Before we came to Christ, our BC years, we were unruly. We did what we wanted to do, Sister Roche. We acted like we wanted to act. Uh, Brother Kim, we 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 went where we wanted to go. We did what we wanted to do. We stayed as long as we want. We shoe shine the boogie until we got tired. We did whatever we want. Unruly. Some of us were disrespectful to adults. Unruly. Some of us had foul language. Unruly. All right. We were disrespectful to people. All right. But after we became adopted. And God became our father. He began to discipline us through his word. Therefore, our behavior changed because of his love and his discipline. So, so this child uh, that, that is illegitimate can still be saved if it submits itself under the rule of his father. All right, look at verse nine. Since we respected, listen to what Paul said. I mean, the Hebrew writer says here, since we respected our earthly father who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? I just said, it just makes sense. All right, it just makes sense. If you can submit to your earthly father, uh, you ought to be able to submit to the father who not only watched for your life, but he watched for your soul. Who not only can take your life, but he also can take your soul. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, there is a benefit of submitting to our heavenly father's discipline. You need to write that down because somebody gonna need to be reminded of that when you're going through. There is a benefit of submitting to our heavenly father's discipline. Look at verse 10. For our earthly fathers discipline us for a few years doing the best they knew how. Watch this. But God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness. Listen to the Hebrew writer. We already know it's correction. We already know it's to purify us. But look at the other benefit so that we might share in his holiness. Why? Because nothing unclean can dwell where God is. All right? Look at verse 11. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. Matter of fact, the Bible says it's painful. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living. Good God Almighty, I'm trying not to preach here. <laughs> I told you there's benefits of submitting yourself to the Heavenly Father. Because although you might have to go through the pain, after a while there is a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. Now, I know you see this progression. 
this progressional process, all right? There is a process here. When you submit to God and you are then uh, in, under his covering and under his care, you submit to his correction and discipline. It causes you to come to a place of peaceful and righteous living. You want to have peace in your life? Live right. But he says for those who are trained in this way, it's a process, ladies and gentlemen. It's a process. You can't, you can't uh, dip in and out and think you're going to mature. You can't dip in and out and think you're going to uh, grow in this. Discipline. You can't dip in and dip out and think you're going to have the covering of this discipline, the transformation of this discipline, all right? It takes a life of commitment, a commitment. The child, think about it. Let's go back to the natural. The child that kept breaking the rules and kept breaking uh, from the father's instruction was a child that continued to feel the pain. Whether it was physical whoopings, whether it was uh, uh, being grounded, having all your uh, amenities taken away, your TV, your phone, you couldn't go nowhere, whatever the case is, you kept feeling the infliction of pain and suffering in your disobedience. But the child that obeys, the child that remained consistently in, in, a, in a place of obedience and submission, watch this, watch this, guys. He receives the favor of the Father. He received the favor of the father. And then that child, you heard it before. Why does so-and-so get to do such and such? What is the reach? What is the response? Because they obeyed. Because they did their chores. Because they studied and passed their tests. They got good grades. It's the same spiritually with God. It's the same spiritually. Now, Sarah Young suggests for our thoughts. That spiritual discipline produces results that resemble what happens when we participate in ex an exercise program. All right? Spiritual discipline produces results that resemble what happens when we participate in an exercise program. Uh, number one, she suggests at first it's painful. And I know that's right. I know Sister Miles can say, man, we started back, we asked y'all to pray for us Sunday, and we started back Monday on, on this um, fitness journey. I know Sister Deidre can say, man, Sister Stephanie can say, man, because we're all in this together. Uh, it is painful when you first start out. It's painful. Uh, and then the next phase you get to, you start to wonder, is it really worth all of the pain? <laughs> say, man, when you can it, it, you know, you, you, you start to wonder, is it really worth all this pain? Uh, but then, but then uh, when we uh, stick to the program, you begin to see uh, the power of commitment. You begin to see the power of change in your life. What do you mean, Brother Miles? What do you mean? Here it is. Here it is. You stick with that program. You remain faithful to the workout program. You remain committed and faithful. You start to get and see, Sister, uh, uh, Brother Hollis, you see uh, that you have more energy. Uh, you start to physically feel better. I don't know about you, but when my blood is running better and running a more regular like it should, I start to think better. Um, you begin to have a more positive outlook on life. You begin to have a better personality. You're not cranky. You're not grouchy. You're not fussing all the time. Everything feels good. You begin to have a different perspective. You are the ones that start telling people, oh, it's not that bad. You got to look at it on the bright side. Put it in the right perspective. Whenever you begin to grow 
and begin to improve yourself, whether physical or spiritual, everything become more positive, more positive. Well, spiritually speaking, if we stick to our spiritual discipline, no matter how hard, no matter how challenging, no matter how painful, Brianna, if we stick to our spiritual uh, uh, discipline, we see good results such as good living, living in righteousness, living in peace, living in faith and not fear. Now, what I want to do right now is pause here. And I want some interaction. I want y'all to get involved with this right here. And I want to I, I know if there's anybody out here that's willing to share a testimony um, of when you, of the time when you became intentionally committed. I mean, you made up your mind that you're going to do better. And you, you were more faithful in church attendance. You were more faithful in uh, Bible study attendance. You were more faithful in home Bible study. You were more faithful in your giving as you should. You were more intentional with ministry. I need to hear some testimonies tonight. Who can tell me uh, the obvious blessings you began to notice when you became intentional in your commitment to being under God's guidance and his discipline. Come on and talk to me now. I remember, I remember as a child, uh, my mother got baptized at church. She had been baptized when she was a teenager, but after uh, uh, she was baptized, when I saw her baptized, uh, no more wonderful world of Disney on Sunday night. We were there on Sunday night. We were there on Wednesday night. We went to gospel meetings. Uh, you know, we, uh, uh, we had her example. And, uh, you know, this uh, half-hearted Christianity, that's nothing to give away to your family. And yes, I really appreciate her example uh, of commitment to us. And it helped me a lot and helped me get into Harding and, and uh, become a preacher. All right. So you, you, you saw a great change, Carlos. You saw a great change because it, it changed your trajectory of your future. Mm -hmm. it, and it changed your outlook of your future. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Anyone else? Nobody else been committed? And I would just like to say, uh, as for me, you know, um, when I really decided that I wanted to truly walk with God and just to really um, embrace my role and, and the privilege of being a child of God, I mean, it was freeing. And, you know, um, and, and I realized that, and I certainly didn't have to have all of the answers. And all I had to do was just go by the playbook. And it was great in relief and that that I didn't have to fight certain battles whatever. The only thing I had to do was just trust in God. And um, it, it was just refreshing. It, it really helped my mental health, knowing that, you know, I don't have control over everything, and, but, and I certainly can be connected willingly with the person who does and that's Christ and so by you know knowing that it, it just freed me up and really just to get to get closer with God and just to uh, be able to do his will with with joy and just being happy because you know and I really enjoy really being myself in Christ and you know I, I don't have to worry about you know, really having a repercussions of doing things that I know is wrong and, you know, trying to cover it up and, you know, getting caught up sometime and suffering the consequences. 
And I found that if I just really did God's will, and I would be better off. And if I did run into problems, it wouldn't be as severe as it was based on my past experience and when I was doing it myself. And so, and, and that's just my experience. Okay. Thank you, Sister Karen. Good to have you tonight. And, and I appreciate that. So you felt a, a you felt a really a change, an inward change that brought about a different behavior. Uh thank you. Thank you, Sister Karen. All right, who else? Come somebody talk to me. Yeah, I have a I have an interchange myself. Can you All right, can y'all hear me? Yes, okay. I didn't get an interchange until. I started talking with Sister Miles Ramon. Now we uh, from Greenwood, Mississippi. You know we we some Mississippi gals, but I was some kind of gal. I was something else. Sure that way. Who? Who? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, I was. But since I have come to uh, Central Point and learn about Central Point and because I knew I didn't know what Christ was. I really didn't. I didn't have my mother to teach me this or my great grandmother or anything like that. I didn't know, but I knew it was something that I was supposed to do and supposed to be. But I'm blessed that I got Sister Ramona Miles. She talked to me and she told me things that I need to do. I don't well, mostly don't need to do no more. I put it that way. Mm -hmm. so, so I am blessed with that. I feel much better every, right. every day. I mean, I have this um, multiple sclerosis, but it doesn't have me. I put it that way. Oh, that's so I, I feel so much better being with Christ. And I, I'll be on the phone. I call my, tell my mom, I was like, look, I got to go to Bible study. I'll talk to you later. She's like, okay. <laughs> and she knows I've been trying to get her to the Bible study. I've been trying to get my daughter, whatever. But I, you know, I just feel bad that they're not getting this this um education. And yes. that makes me feel bad. And I don't know, and that's the thing, I don't know what to do. I don't know what can I do. No more than just tell them, you know, the things that I've learned, you know, and tell Clara that, all right, lady. You need to do this and you don't need to do that. And it, it, I'm just trying. I'm just trying. I'm keeping myself with the father. And I'm glad. So that's it. Let me go give me some from the All end. right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, while someone else is getting their thoughts together, I want to I want to share something with you, Sister Faith. Uh, you say you don't know what else to do. I want you to write down and read it later. First Corinthians chapter three. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, all right? And I want you to read, uh, for homework, I want you to read verses 1 uh, through verse number 6, or verse number 7, 1 through 7. And I want you to see, when you read that later, I'm not going to take the time to read it now, but when you read that later, I want you to understand that you've done what you're supposed to do. You've planted the seed in their heart. And that's what God wants you to do. Paul said, I have planted, Apollos has watered, but it's God who gives the increase. And the leaders on here can tell you, I've said this to them multiple times, i said it to the congregation, what makes me be able to go home at the end of the day or at the end of the week and make me be able to live with myself and feel comfortable with what I've done is because I'm going to make sure I do what God has called me to do. I can't make people do anything, Sister Faith. We cannot make people do anything. But what we Amen. must do, what we must do is do what God has called us to do. And that is to teach. That is to teach. And when we do our part in teaching, God will do the rest. He'll do the rest. All right. So I want you to read that. First Corinthians chapter three, verse one through seven. And so you can feel comfortable in knowing that you've done the right thing. You've introduced them to the Lord. You've invited them to the Lord. And now it's upon them to accept that invitation and to act on it. God bless you, Sister Faith. God bless you. All right. Who else out there got, got the testimony you want to share? Hey, Papa, I had to write mine down so I wouldn't forget. 
Oh. I thought I saw you right, Doc. Go ahead. <laughs> but uh, I think the first thing that came to my mind, I said it, you know, having this relationship with God and, and, and committing yourself to him, it keeps you out of certain places, out of certain situations. Um, for instance, one thing that came to my mind is, it, it, you know, it'll keep you out of jail. You know, you won't do certain things, you know. Uh, I also wrote down, it, it keeps your mind sane. I said also, it, it, it lets you know that you're not alone, you know, mm -hmm. on, 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 on this journey in life. Mm -hmm. uh, I also witnessed, you know, that when you have that relationship with God, you know, you find yourself helping others. Yes. You know, you, you never know the relationship you have with God, and you know, in him, you can say certain things or, or, or reassure people that, you know, that, you know, you're not alone. And, and like the sister just said, you can invite them to, to Christ and, and invite them and, and, and let them know, hey, you know, you, you, you got a you got a you got a friend in Christ. You, you got a father with the Lord who's never going, you know, never going to leave you alone. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you have that relationship, I feel like at the end of the day, Whenever the Lord calls you home, you know where your resting place will be. So those, oh, yeah. those was just some those was just some things that, that came to my mind that I that I wrote down. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Your your B ma over here said, "Give my son an A." <laughs> <laughs> God bless you, Nate. God yes, bless sir. you. And if I had yes, to sir. summarize what you were saying, uh, it really affected your decision making. Uh, mm -hmm. And you're right, and it does. Yes, sir. When you have that relationship with God. You develop a different conscience. You develop a good, a different conscience. And if you should do wrong, uh, it will it will bother you and bring you to a place of repentance. Yeah, we're gonna stumble. We're gonna fall. We're gonna make the wrong plans. Hear me well now. Hear me well, because everything we do is not a mistake. Come on, wave your hand at me, Sister Satchin. Everything we do is not a mistake, Sister Connie. Some oh, you're right. Some things in our planning, Sister Kim, we know is wrong. So you're but, right. But here's the difference. Here's the difference. Remember Luke 15? And if, if you got a thought, please don't, be, don't, don't, don't lose your thought. In Luke 15, when that young man departed from his father, I believe it's around beginning around verse 11, I believe. But if, if, like the old preachers say, start at verse 1, you'll find it. It's in Luke chapter 15. But that young man left his father. He left from under the coverage of his father. He left from under the guidance. He left from under the covering, um, the provisions, everything. Uh, and he went into a far country. And I need you to understand a far country doesn't necessarily mean distance. It means being in a place that you've never been before. All right? That's what it literally means a place that you've never been before, and I could really exegete that a little while longer, a place you should not have been, a place of destitute, a, a, a place of sin, all right? Um, but watch this, watch this. What was once deposited into him, Sister Roche, it never left him. He left his place of covering but his covering never left him. There was something within him that when he got to his lowest point, now watch this. Some people get to their lowest point and they're at a point of no return. They, their life ends where, where they are. But this young man, there was something inside of him, Brother Marcus, when he got to his lowest point, and that's why you don't give up on your children. When you, when you have done your job and have deposited God into them, all right, his word. That young man says, and you got to see this as a spiritual picture. I know what I will do now. Because the servants in my father's house are living better than I am. The Bible say he came to himself. So we know sometimes we temporarily lose our mind. Spiritually, we lose our mind. We know we do it physically. But sometime in our spiritual walk, brothers and sisters, we lose that grasp 
of spiritual reality. We have become overcome, overtaken by the flesh. And I know you know about that. If you don't go back and read Romans 7, you'll hear Paul's account all about that argument. But sometimes we're overtaken by the flesh. But here's the, here's the shout. No matter how low that young man went, what was deposited into his spirit by his father never left him. And it was enough to bring him to a place of repentance. Watch this now. I'm going to help some parents here. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm talking to. But you got to remember who's our example? God, the apostles, and Jesus which is also the word of God. You don't let a child come back into your house still wayward, rowdy, roughy, disrespectful, nasty. No, you don't let that child come back. The child in Luke 15 that came back was a repentant child, a child whose heart had been changed and he was now ready to submit himself. You remember what he said, Father, I'm not worthy to be your son. Just make me one of your hired servants. Now, if that wasn't repentance, you will never see a portrait of repentance. So parents, don't let children disrespect and denigrate your home. Love them. But sometimes loving them is letting them go to let God deal with them. All right? Now I'm getting on something else. Let me come back. Um, all right. Anyone else? Brother Miles. Yes, sir. You know. We got um, three minutes. All right. I, I grew up in the church. Yes, I, sir. I knew that I was supposed to be there. I, I went there. Um, I had great examples growing up. Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. It quietly. I would never say it out loud because I grew I did grow up in the church, but I, I quietly in my mind thought, well, I don't think it take all this that I'm seeing from uh, <laughs> what mom and dad are doing. And and as I matured, I understood <laughs> for myself that I I have to have a true relationship with him. When I start practicing lordship in my life. Yes, yes. And, and, and the fact that, you know, Daddy. to the untrained eye, they say, Daddy. brother, Mark is doing good. Cause I'm there, I'm doing things, and he had, and, and and God had a lot of areas in my life, but He didn't have my pocketbook. I know that, you know, and some things had to happen. And yes. as I got closer, so what changed? And to make the long story short, is I I used to have extreme highs and lows, you know, yes. mountaintop experiences and valley experiences. Do I still have things that are great that happen and things that happen that are not great? But it's not like being on a roller coaster anymore because God is with me throughout and I have the same relationship. So even when it's not a great day, I can handle it because I understand how this relationship works and that things happen for, for my good and his glory. That's the oh, difference. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. the difference. And he's blessed me. It, 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 He's blessed me. Not, so it, it, I don't have to get a promotion to get blessed financially <laughs> because he makes it enough for me. And I understand how it works. He doesn't have to rain manna from heaven for, for, for me to be taken care of. I understand how it works. That's the difference that's happened in my life. And that happened through my relationship with it. And I don't mean I'm better than anybody else, but I just, he beat, he, he, he whooped me good enough. Where yeah. I understood, you know, uh, that, that correction, it made me, it made me change some things. Mm -hmm. mm. Boy, you about to make me preach, Marcus, uh, for our good and for his glory. Lord have mercy. All right, listen, our time is far spent. Uh, if you have some remarks, if you have any questions, write them down, please write them down. If you can't wait till next week, uh, go out on our website. Uh, Brother Marcus is on top of that. Submit your question. Brother Miles will take time. If you want me to call you, I'll do it. You want me to respond by email, I'll do it. If you want, just give it to me for next week, whatever it is. 
uh, we'll make ourselves available for you. But our time is far spent uh, and we don't want to go over. We want to have a little fellowship time. Although y'all been jumping off here like y'all jumping off a hot stove. And I don't know if y'all been having some good food waiting on y'all, but uh, we're trying to do it right over here, Brother uh, Hollis. So we've had our dinner before seven o'clock. And uh, so if we have a little something, it'll be some snack or some some fruit or something. But 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 listen, we've had a great time tonight. Uh, your takeaway, your takeaway. He purifies us because our ultimate goal is heaven, and nothing unclean can dwell there. He disciplines us because he loves us. He disciplines us to correct us. As his children, we are under his covenant. We are under his care. All right. Um, if we can take correction from our earthly father, who don't know how to get from earth to glory on his own, certainly we can submit to the, the, the discipline of our heavenly father, who not only created us, who gave us life, who is the sustainer of life, and who is the giver of eternal life. So, so we need to trust him. We need to trust him. All right. Uh, and then finally, uh, you know, uh, spiritual discipline is is it, it produces produce results as if you were in a exercise program. First starting out is painful. Uh, then you start to ask yourself, is it really worth all the pain? And uh, then once you get stuck to the program, you start to see great benefits and great results. What am I saying mm -hmm. to you tonight as we close? Stay with the program. Stay with God. There's great benefits. The reason he disciplines you is because he loves you. And I'm going to deal with this next week. Lord's willing, no, no, nothing happened. The creek don't rise. Uh, we're going to talk about this discipline in a little deeper way because we want you to understand we're not talking about the mistreatment of people. We're talking about discipline and hardship that you come under from living a faithful life with God. That's what the Hebrew writer is talking about. Excuse me. We don't want to take it out of context. He's talking about when we live in, in a committed life to God, we will have trials. We will have tests. Okay. We will have challenges. All right. Homework assignment. Uh, when we come back next week, we'll open up uh, with questions. Any com comments or questions from verse from question seven? Uh, but your reading assignment, uh, you want to look at. Um, let me see if I got anything for you to look at um, on tonight. Okay. All right. Um, Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 through 10. Matthew chapter 23, uh, verses 1 through 10. And then also you can look at Romans 3 and verse number 4. Romans 3, verse number 4. Then I want you to look at Numbers 23, the A part of verse 19. Numbers 23, 19. We're going to mention Psalm, the 89th division in verse 35. Psalms 89 and 35. We're going to mention Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. Then go ahead and write these three scriptures down. We're just going to touch on them, but you need them in your notes. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse number 2. Again, Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse number 2. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 and 6. And then finally, Revelations 22, verse 18 and 19. Revelations 22, verse 18 and 19. I commend you to God in the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the sanctified. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. 
Paul's salutation to the uh, elders of the Ephesus church. Uh, so we, we trust and pray that we've said something tonight that will help you be better today than you were on yesterday and give you a greater hope for tomorrow. Uh, Sister Miles, any announcements? Just a reminder of the ladies in devotion. Uh, colleges on Thursday, December 16th, 8th. Right. The ladies' devotion call is on Thursday, December the 8th. December the 8th, Thursday, 6 30. And for the ladies who have not submitted their two choices. Two choices. All right. For the sister social, the ladies who have not submitted your two gift choices, you need to do that, please. By noon tomorrow, please. Uh, those of you who are going to be a part of that, Lady Social, uh, make sure you do that. Anything else? All right, um, Brother Spence, any announcements? Uh, no, I don't have any. All right, Brother Marcus? No, sir. All right, Brother John, is Brother John on? I don't yeah, Brother John, any announcements? Okay, I guess he don't have any announcements. All right. Uh, let us bow, and uh, after this, we ask you to unmute yourselves and have some fellowship. Father God, we come tonight. We thank you once again for this hour of study, this hour of prayer, uh, this hour of meditation, this hour of fellowship. Father, we trust and pray that tonight we've said something from your word that will help and will encourage your children that we might remain committed. Although the discipline may be harsh, sometimes the di discipline might be long, sometimes it may be heavy. But Father, we pray that we will realize that there is a benefit, a great benefit on the other side of the discipline. Help us to understand that it's not punishment per se, but that it is correction. It's for guidance and protection. Father, we're grateful for all of those who are gathered tonight. We ask you to bless everyone under the sound of my voice and their loved ones. Yes. Bless them with the desires of their heart according to your will and your purpose. If it's healing, heal their family, heal themselves. If they need a financial blessing, we ask, we call upon you, Father. Father, we're praying a very special prayer on behalf of Sister Veronica Woods and Brother Malik. We're mm -hmm. praying, Father, that you will strengthen them spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, that you will bless them with patience and healing. Father, we're praying for Brother Carlos and Sister Nancy for complete healing of their bodies, mm -hmm. but also for a ministry that they might both serve in to give you glory and to save the lost and to edify the saved. Father, we're praying for my dear mother and all of the sick and the afflicted that you will touch and heal their bodies. We're praying for those who are bereaved, Lord, that you will comfort their heart and strengthen their hands. We're praying for our nation, our politicians, lawmakers, and those who are in authority, that you will remove those who are evil, those who promote falsehood, those who promote hatred and replace them with those who are seeking guidance from you and from your word. Now, Father, when it is yours to call and ours to answer, we ask for a peaceful hour in death, trusting that we shall never die at the hands of man by mechanical failure or accident, but that we will simply sleep away in sweet peace and hear you say, well done in glory. This is our prayer. We ask in your holy son, Jesus' name. Let us all say amen.